So guys, Joe and I are doing our uh, Monday lift. And so today we're going to do our own stuff, whatever we're doing lifting wise. And then we're also going to take a couple questions that you guys had on Instagram today. I, um, I posted to you to see, post you guys to see if you were interested in any strength training tips or anything like that, because I get questions about it all the time. So we're gonna go over some of the questions you guys uh, sent to us to answer them. And then uh, I'm gonna be doing one of, the, one of the workouts I did. So I sent out a newsletter to everybody that got the, the geese. And inside that newsletter, there was a particular, like there was like a little workout plan that you could do like for like four weeks. And uh, I'm gonna be doing the day three, which is a sort of a deadlift. Uh, back day so deadlift and leg day so um, yeah so hope you guys enjoy the video so um, while she was doing his strength training I like to have an uh, Olympic lifting focus uh, competing in that so we're gonna do four sets of two power snatches uh, from the blocks of the knee. You'll see those set up. It's working on basically not losing my pull uh, going into the second transition. Then we're gonna do four sets of three power cleans, one jerk, and we're gonna move into some heavy push press, four sets of six at 70, 75. We're gonna kind of go by feel on that one. And finally, we're gonna do four uh, sets of six front squat at 75%. So it should be four sets around six at 315-ish. I had a big focus day. You'll notice what I'm doing mine is I like to, uh, I have my own camera set up because I'm, not only will I look at my repetitions, but I'll send these to other coaches for feedback on what they see, what I can work on as well. But you'll see me pause in a lot of the catch positions today, uh, more so as I'm playing a checklist through my head, trying to get a feel of where things are lining up, what fell off, how's my catch position look. Big thing I'm focusing on is my overhead extension uh, with my elbows. So you'll see a lot of that through my workouts today. Again, for some of you guys that like, get really curious about weight training, I rarely go heavy, heavy anymore. Like there's things where like, I know I can go heavier, but I don't like to do it for the simple fact that uh, for what I'm trying to do, there's no point. Like I, I did the thing where I went really heavy in weight training and was like, just putting up PRs and bigger numbers, my weight got bigger, but there's such a, there's a diminishing return there, you know? It's cool, to, it's cool to do if you really want to lift weights and get bigger and stronger and you just want to put up some sick numbers, that's cool. But understand that like, you could deadlift 500 pounds, doesn't mean that, that you know, and that's really not even that much. Let's say 700, right? you can deadlift 700 pounds if you want to. But again, only, uh, only so much of that's gonna to translate to the mat. So, um, you know, I do it because I enjoy lifting weights. And I do it to kind of keep everything moving and it helps prevent injuries, so. This one comes from, this was from uh, Ray on Instagram. So Ray sent one in, he goes, if you have no muscle, well you have muscle, you have to have some, may not be showing right now, but you got some. If you have no muscle, is it better to do low weight, high reps, or high weight, low reps in the beginning? I'll tell you what I think, but you're welcome to chime in. Somebody that doesn't train, you're gonna have beginner results right out of the gate, whether you're doing high reps or low reps. Right now, just train, and then once you get a feel for what's going on, you can build off of that platform. But if you don't train right now, you're just gonna have immediate beginner results within the first six to 10 weeks that are gonna blow your mind. So right now, my suggestion would be just train. Let's get started. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like just pick a program. Any of the basic stuff, some five by fives, five three ones, any of that stuff, some basic stuff, just start doing it. I mean, that's a recommendation somebody I can see in person. Yeah. It's just train until we start on the window. Well, yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is like Windler is super simple to follow. The problem is everybody's like looking for some special program and it's like, man, just train. Yeah. That's the biggest thing is that you're just doing something. Jamie Harvey. Jamie Harvey says, do you do any direct grip strength training specifically for Nogi? And if so, what does this involve? So, Grip strength training, so for first off, I'll tell you the best thing to do with grip, uh, grip strength is learn how to grip, especially for Nogi, learn how to grip 
And when you when you go do some rounds with your partners, do some rounds specifically for fighting for grips, nothing else, right? Get used to fighting for grips and understanding how to grip them more. Um, as far as specific grip strength training, Farmers are good, man. But farmers, I don't look at as grip strength training. It's more of a capacity conditioning. Well, pretty much all of your strength training involves grip. Like there's no way to do strength training. You're always got a barbell, a dumbbell, a kettlebell. If you're doing long holds though, like if you're doing like a farmers, if you're doing deadlifts, even with, do, we do, do a deadlift and at the, at the end of the set, pick up and just hold that fucking bar. For what? If you then you can do pull-ups with like um, fat grips or for towels or whatever you want. The thing is, is most of the time what happens is the more and more you train, again you can do some extra st stuff for grip strength. But at the same time, the more and more you do the stuff that you're doing over on the mats, the more it's going to translate over because you have to develop that specific sort of like movement for the, the grip strength. Big problem with people in their grips is because they don't do anything with their hands anymore. Like nobody, like everybody, like types on a computer, and they they don't actually do much thing, much physical stuff anymore. Got one here from uh, Ernesto Ernesto Vasquez. He says. I trained for six months, but I stopped because I couldn't find the time or the money for it. I want to get back into it, but I currently have a gym membership, talking about like a weight training gym. He says, I'm wondering what's the best way you guys would recommend splitting up jujitsu, possibly Muay Thai training, and weight training. I want to do both, but I know it will be hard and also tiring. When I trained jujitsu and did Muay Thai as well, I was, would be too exhausted and could not find the energy for weights. Thanks in advance. So how do you split up? If you're gonna do a little bit of jiu-jitsu, maybe Muay Thai, but we'll say jiu-jitsu, how do you split up jiu-jitsu and your weight training? Uh, I use me, for example, with me and jiu-jitsu and strength training. Is on days I have a lot of weight training and conditioning, I will only drill in jiu-jitsu. So it's possible to do jiu-jitsu and do both, but days I do hard training in jiu-jitsu, all I do is auxiliary, lightweighted stuff with my weight training. So it, I gotta, you gotta find that balance. If it's a hard day in jiu-jitsu, it's either a light, training day with weights or off. If it's a hard training day with weights, it's either a light training day with jujitsu and off. I just flip back and forth. I would not do weights and then jujitsu or jujitsu and then weights just because again it's a lot to put on the body. So like for instance I'm lifting now and you could drill. Drilling you, drilling's not bad but we're talking about rolling because you know, I know a lot of guys want to roll all the time. So you could do drilling after weight training or vice versa, but I wouldn't do them like heavy rolling and heavy weight training afterwards. I honestly like to get my weight training separated by at least three or four hours. It allows me to kind of recoup from whatever else I'm doing. And then also if I, if, I, if I do weight training, if I give it a few hours afterwards, I feel good for jujitsu and vice versa. So as far as how to split it up time-wise, just make room for it. You could do a push-pull routine and do two days a week and have something. Again, you're, you gotta think about it this way. You're never, if you're a jiu-jitsu practitioner, you're not gonna be a bodybuilder, right? You're not gonna be a power lifter. That's not, your, that's not what you're getting after. You can be stronger and you can give yourself like good strength training to make sure that you support your body so you don't get injured, but you're not gonna be like a hardcore champion lifter, right? And so just get something in and you can squeeze in a couple days a week and be fine. If you wanna do a little bit more, do a little bit more. Wanna do a little less, do a little less, right? Like there's weeks where I get so busy with jujitsu if I got a big competition coming up, I don't lift at all. And there's other weeks where like training in jujitsu is a little bit lower and I lift like four days a week. So you have to kind of, you gotta be ready to fluctuate with things. So it doesn't have to be a set thing. And you also have to see how your body feels. Maybe you set a routine out where you're doing something and you're like, I got a little bit more in me or maybe I got a little bit less. You need to be able to adjust on how that body feels. Says hello from New Jersey. Quick question. Also, um, are there benefits to lifting weights before grappling BJJ or judo class? Are there benefits to lifting weights after a grappling class? Um, keep the videos coming. Thanks, Mark. So it's from Mark. Um, are there benefits to it? I'll, I'll tell you like this. If, if, if it's not a hard training class, I can lift weights beforehand because my everything's still tight, and I can go out and do jiu-jitsu, and I'm okay. And honestly, I can feel more like I'm more energetic as a coach. If I've got to do some hard rolling, like let's say it's a hard training session for you, 
I don't see benefits to either one of them being back and forth, like a hard lift, hard rolling session, no way. Now, if you were gonna do some, like some conditioning work, maybe after a rolling session, that's okay. Skill work. Skill work or something, that would be okay, but as far as like actually getting some real like hard training in, both, no. I, I think you're gonna be, you're gonna, if you do like a hard roll and then you go train, you're gonna find your muscles, everything's all loose, and you're not gonna have that, that power you need. And then if you exert yourself in the weight room and then you go try to hard roll, you're gonna find you're like, you're just gonna lose that oomph. I can tell you days that I've done heavy lifting or hard weight lifting and try to make a jiu-jitsu class, I'm wore out. That you can't really perform the way you need to. And vice versa, days you do jiu-jitsu and try to lift, like you've gotta eat and recover at least two or three hours before we can go back into even a, a moderate loaded session. So. Oh, camouflage, okay. I thought, I'm like this all the time, someone tries to go up to like do something and my hands are instantly grabbing the wrists. I'm doing like some keto. Yeah. Going for a hug. Can you do brainwash? Nice to hug you, friend. I'm so glad to have friends. <laughs> The workout plan that I'm doing right now, guys, is one that uh, a guy I know, big, strong, strong man, powerlifter, he made it for me after my knee surgery, like four years ago. So I'm just messing around with it a little bit and tweaking a few things. that I need to take time off and lift and have that nerve pain. <laughs> what I have going on does not prohibit me from moving weight. Hey, ain't that some shit though? Like, like that's that's what everybody does, right? Like we're like, oh man, man I'm not injured, just like that. I just gotta tweak. I'm not injured, it's hey, still nerve. nerve but pain. Uh, coaches are the world's worst for taking their own fuck advice. Fuck yeah, they are. If somebody else tell me, like, dude, you need to go to the doctor, take time off, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's the worst. Eugene, the jujitsu therapist, <laughs> He will tell you how to fix everything. And he'll he'll say, "Man, listen, you need to take some time off, and you need to rest your legs, whatever." And then that dude gets hurt, like, and his like hands broken or something. He's like, like taping himself up and like oh, yeah. strapping his arm to his body, <laughs> like, "Come on, let's go." Yeah. And then you try to take it easy on him, and he'll get all pissed at you for taking. He's like, "No, man, let's go. Yeah. Let's go hard." I'm like, "Eugene, you're hurt." He's like, "I'm I'm fine. Let's keep going." Crazy bastard. He does that stuff because he'll be hurt, and then you try to take. You know, when your training partner's hurt, you want to like, hey man, let's let's move, but let's not take it too hard. And he like he'll get pissy at you. I remember one day he's coming in with one hand, and like. Hur, hur, hur. Got a private lesson. So I got uh, Joel's in here from Texas. So we're gonna get ready to do a private lesson uh, to each together. So my lift is gonna be cut short a little bit. We got we got a late start because we because uh, we were. Late. No, we didn't really get a late start. We did have a late start because I was planning to get ready around 10:30, and then our cameraman was a little late. Well, Michael, <laughs> <laughs> my time you have a serving of sugar, put a mark on the board. Oh. So we put what counts as marks and stuff up there. And when we mentioned alcohol, Rob went, No. <laughs> is it a sugar board? Where's yeah. that? Okay. I'll take one that sugar. This is just the rough draft of it, like we're going to fine tune it for next month, we're just getting everybody used to it. I'll tell you right now, once a day I have, I have once a day right after training, right after I'm done training hard, I have just a little bit of added sugar. Um, <laughs> we, we have, not count, we're talking like those things right there that are on that board, if it's not on that board right now, it does not count. So I eat, I have, I have like, it's like, oh a, I did too man, it's, it's like a little oatmeal ball. It's like a little oatmeal ball that they call a cookie. Literally, yeah. like it's like gluten-free oats. But does it have like sugar in it? It has a little cane yeah, sugar in it. So that's, that's my one every day. Yeah. So. But we're having fun with this right now. I'm going to find some. Right here, though? Yeah, just put your hand in it's, it, well, one, a guy like you, man, you're coming here holding yourself accountable right out of the gate. So I'll, I'll say it, because ha I'll have one today, so I'm gonna go mark that sucker down. Right after training, something with just a little bit of extra sugar added to it and some ca some coffee. Like, I don't like to drink a ton of coffee before training, but right afterwards, man, like, because it um, it create, helps with the insulin spike, basically, while you're taking in all that extra nutrients right after training, helps uptake and take it in. You get almost, like, high from it, I love it.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, if you guys want to chime in and get some questions in, uh, typically we're gonna do it on Mondays, Mondays, uh, Monday mornings. Check on my Instagram. I have a post asking you guys for some questions. Drop them in there. Or if you don't have Instagram or don't like that kind of thing, drop your strength training comments or questions below. And Joe and I will try to answer them in through some of the videos coming up. And uh, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, dude.